Alrighty, we are back for this 2012 Dodge Ram 2500 HD with the 6.7, having some the same issues I did in part one and part two with the CAN bus issue. So we got Kian engine off. Let's see, we did a full system scan. Let's see what we got. And PCM, we got CAN C bus active. First time I had an active code, which is good, because actually when I drove it up here, I was doing all kinds of weird stuff. The instrument cluster was going crazy and all that stuff. You'd have to really watch parts one and two. Um, we identified the connector, but and there was some debris in there, and Jeremy cleaned it up. But there's still some uh, stuff going on with the engine computer connector. I'll show you later. Anyway, so engine computer can C bus, drivetrain control module can C bus, ABS. Lost comm, impossible data, impossible data. Steering wheel position sensor airbag. Lost comm, can't see bus off. TPMS, lost comm. Central gateway, can't see bus. Lost comm with a lot of stuff. Steering angle sensor, can't see bus. Oh, it's just a lot of lost comm and can't see bus issues. So, what we're gonna do now is hook up our oscilloscope. And I got to remember what pins I need to go off of, so I need to pull up some schematics again. i review the video that I made in parts one and two. But basically, like I said, the can't see bus is the fast bus, and it's having issues. It's losing communication, and we'll try to show it here again on the oscilloscope. So I'm going to get some schematics pulled up, and uh, go from there. All right, so we're going to pull it up. I'm going to go on my laptop here. I set up a new laptop, but we have in other videos where... I made this laptop for uh, programming, so I got four operating systems. I'm gonna use the J2534 pass through to program. So we're just going to the domestic and load that up. All right, so it's loading up. I'll have this in other videos, but I got the Ford program, the Mopar program, and then the Chevy program on here. But so you go ahead and pull up schematics for the 2012 Dodge Ram. For the CAN bus. Alright, so I got CAN C bus pulled up. And then we're looking for, you'd have to watch parts one and two because I go over all of this. But the diesel engine, there's two there's a connector, there's two connectors on the engine computer, but connector two is your CAN high, CAN low. That's the connector on the engine computer that's having issues. And it goes up through connector 130. And then it goes up to pin connector C1, pins 15 and 16. They're white with light blue wires from your TIPM, which is your central gateway module. Totally integrated power slash central gateway module. And the other CAN lines come off of pin connector C7 pins 28 and 29 going to all the other modules. So all these modules on this bus for whatever configuration it has, which you go over in part one and two of the video, they're losing calm. Uh, it's because of the connector on the engine computer we found. So I hooked up a scope up. You can either go off these pins, can high, can low, or these pins, can high, can low. Those or those. Because once the whole bus is affected, it gets affected the way this one's uh, responding so we move the wire harness down here at the engine computer and that's when it acted up so before i do that connector two on the engine will show you and then connector 130 which is there and it goes up to the tip them and the other ones are white and light blue as well yeah he's got four-wheel drive so on this one it's white and light blue white and light green over here it's White and light green, white and light blue. So the pins we're talking about. Well, first off, the engine computer's right there. So there's one connector, there's the other one. What we had problems with is this first one. That's the one that's causing all the issues. And that is the engine computer. The other connector is connector 130, so it runs up to the from the engine computer to this connector, connector C130, 
and it goes into your Chipham Central Gateway module. There's two can wires there, white and light blue. And then there's two other can wires back there, white and light blue. We're just gonna probe off one of these and check it out. All right, so I got one lead in, because I can low, according to the schematics, the other lead going to battery ground. Key on engine off. Your two and a half bias voltage means idle. That means don't do nothing. So that line there means don't do nothing. And these are your zeros and ones. So it's going two and a half down to one and a half, one and a quarter. Those are your messages. You can change your scaling. All that stuff. So that's can low. Then we're going to go to can high. I'm just going right beside the wire so I don't hurt nothing. Not piercing into it, just beside the wire. And that's can high, two and a half to three and a half, or roughly three and three quarters. So what we're looking for is anomaly. You get your two and a half bias voltage and all that stuff's good. We're gonna move the wire and on the connector and we'll see what happens. All right, so I'm under the truck. Evan's helping hold the old scope. So we got can high, two and a half going up. Looks pretty good so far. There's the connector there. There's this one and this one. This is the one that was causing issues. I'm just going to grab it and wiggle it slightly while we watch the cam or the scope. Buddy, move your head for a sec. There, I just moved it. As you can see it dropped down. Do it, did again. All I'm doing is moving it with my hand right here. Can't really see in there, but I'm grabbing above this where the harness comes down and moving it. Okay, buddy, move your head. Turn it this way some more. Okay, there you go, hold it. I'm just gonna wiggle it again, move the harness. Boom, do it again, did it again. So I'm just holding it in this spot right now. And as soon as I let go, it goes back. So, of course, it's going to do it when it runs, too, which I'll show you in a minute. So we're having the same issues as we did before. We cleaned some dirt out of the connector, but and we wiggle the heck out of it afterwards. But it worked for a while, but there's something else going on. I believe it's probably pin retention or wire pulling out. Obviously, something's loose, so we got to go in there and take that uh, back show off and... Take a look. I just wanted to confirm the problem again. So I'm going to move it again. Yeah, same exact thing. Just move it. Drops offline like clockwork. I'm not supposed to do that. I'm going to move the other one just to make sure it's not the other one as well. Which it's not. I'm moving the other one right now. It's not doing nothing. Go back to the bad one. It does the same exact thing. It probably just needs a new wire. Needs a new wire, you said? Yeah. <laughs> That's probably. probably. Does. So I'm, gonna, I'm trying to determine here. Let me do one more time. Okay, so we know what's in that connector. If we go can low, it's going to be the same exact thing dropping out. But let me show you one more thing on camera before we start taking this apart. All right, so what we're going to do now is Evan's going to hold the camera. You're going to have to hold the camera over here, though, okay, buddy? Okay. Well, you know, let me move the steering wheel real quick. All right, so I moved the wheel. So Evan's going to hold the camera here. We got the key on engine running. And you can notice that this light's on. Where's my finger at? Down there. Oh, the engine light's on. So what you're going to watch for is when I wiggle that wire, just like part one and two, this is going to probably jump around. All these lights are going to come on. It's going to do all kinds of weird stuff randomly. It depends how long we do it because we are moving the wire and the CAN bus is sending information, the modules, to this instrument cluster. So I'm just going to hold that. And then I'm going to do it a while. You don't need to yell when it does it, okay? okay. Just say it does it. Just say, okay? I'm going to do it for a while, though, okay? Okay. Yep. 
Perfect. All right, so you can see that it did it in the when Evan was holding it. All I was doing I was just moving the wire like I did when I had the old scope hooked up. Tachometer's moving, all these lights are coming on, stuff's flashing. Because all these modules are on a bus and they're sending information to this uh, instrument cluster. Um, so what we're gonna have to do now, because we know it's that one connector, like if it wasn't running right, uh, there's obviously a loose connection. We'd have to go move it, right? So we gotta get in there, take that connector back off, take the back shell apart, look at the pins again, because there's something else going on. Well, at least we know it's that connector in front of the computer. And then we'll uh, go from there. Oh, and by the way, all the codes we had were all these C codes, C bus codes, right? If we clear all these and it runs fine, they won't come back. If we clear them all and move the harness, they'll come back. And the longer you do it, the longer it loses calm, the more codes are going to come back for lost communication, can C bus, and so forth. So like I said, I'm going to have to unhook that connector from the engine computer and start checking. Alrighty, before I take it apart, I want to do another test. Because I uh, tried to move it from the top, which is, you know, the same thing. I'm just on the top of it from the engine bay. And it's not doing, acting up again. So I'm going to grab it and move it the same exact way and watch it. And I'm moving it all over the place kind of like I did in part two of my video for this and it's still it's not doing it now but earlier you've seen on camera it was like clockwork every single time so we got to figure out what I'm gonna have to do now and by the way connector 130 up there I moved that around uh, that is all good that's always been good but uh the uh what I'm going to have to do is pull this back shell off, check that pin retention, wiring, pins, or if there's something going on the, the actual computer, is there a crack joint on the circuit board? So we're going to have to take a look at that and uh, go from there. Alrighty, there's one thing I also want to look at. I looked for service bolt-ins, and I think I did in parts one and two, and there was none, but it's something I always want to take a look at. So I'm in the engine computer. I'm going to go to what they call mode nine or ECU information. And look at what software version is in this vehicle. So it's a part number 12350331 Alpha Golf. So what I want to do is make sure that's the newest one. So you go to my computer doesn't die. Go to Tech Authority. And you can go to It's related documents and service, flash availability, J2534. There'll be a little document here. They kind of hide it on you, Mopar. So we'll download that. And once this thing ever pulls up, we'll take a look. Well, it finally opened up. So we're gonna open this PDF document up. We're gonna search for this part number Control F, one, two, three, five, oh, three, three, one, Alpha Golf. And there's one match, one of one. One match. So 2012, six, seven, 2500 ECM. Old part number is what he has. There is a new part number, and there's a TSB and a recall that address whatever concern it is. So there is a newer software update that ends instead of AG, it ends in AN. So I'm gonna take a look at that. Um, I'm not saying that's, a, I know that's not the problem with this because we're moving the wire harness around and we can physically see it, but I always, we'll take a look since we're here. I wanna see what this TSB is and this recall and see what this uh, new part number, because there's a reason they updated the software for something, right? So we're gonna take a look at that. Alrighty, so I pulled up this TSB 1800113, which is right here. And 
So basically just go over it, it says Diagnostic System Improvements Flash 2012 Ram Pickup 2500 with the six sevens. Pickup trucks equipped with the six seven Cummins diesel have software improvement enhancements available to following DTCs, EGR, mass airflow, performance, fuel rail. They're all P codes, oxygen sensor, diesel particulate, intake heater stuff. No U codes, which we all have U codes. Um, talks about some transmission shift stuff. This isn't gonna apply to this truck because this truck has a tune on it. So the tune overrides all of this stuff in here and he has none of these codes anyways. But if he did in this truck, we would go through that. If the customer had complaints of these codes, we would reflash it, but we don't need to because, well, uh, he's got a tune on it. So I always like to, I know we kind of went down a different avenue here, but just like to show that I always want to look for TSPs too. In this case, it doesn't address it. And we know what the problem is. It's in that wire harness or connector, but it's something you look at. But if we did have to, you know, program, we would use Ytech 2.0 and pay the subscription fees and all that stuff, hook up a J box power supply and so forth. But we're not going down the road. What we're going to do next is take the connector apart and uh, start troubleshooting. All right. So before I take that connector apart, I actually wanted, I did one other test. And like you can see here, Evan's helping again, two and a half volts. I have it on can high. Your bias voltage two and a half going high to three and a half, three and three quarter. It's good. This next frame here, it goes to zero volts, right? And there's a lot of hash in there. So that tells me, or 30 millivolts, tells me it's a short to ground and it gets better. So when we're doing this, we had a, uh, you'd wiggle that harness under there. I'd wiggle it. It would act up for most of the time. And then once in a while it wouldn't. But when it would, it would always go to zero volts or, you know, we're talking 30 to 300 millivolts max, which is a short to ground. So there's a band clamp under there, a band that goes around the harness, uh, pushed on that and that's when it acted up. And I believe that is the issue. All right, <clears throat> so after doing a bunch more research, I'll show you when I get up under there. And we took some of that harness apart. Uh, to show you when I get under there, but first off, I'll show you the schematic here again. The uh, well, where the hell is it? So, powertrain control module diesel connector 2, pin 16 and 35, can high, can low, goes up to the tip them. Well, this connector 2 is can. Negative is white with a light blue, can positive is white with a light green. Well, under there, there's this big clamp that's wrapped around the harness really tight. And the harness is, when you open it up, it's, it's pretty big, but then when you put it on this clamp, it gets real tight. And this is bolted to the computer, which is bolted to the frame. Well, in part one of this video and other parts, that's definitely it did two channels in part one where it showed both can high and can low both go on the ground. So I took this off, I was thinking maybe this was chafed through on the can wires or voltage bleeding over, taking it to ground. So we can make it happen like clockwork if we take, you know, X, imagine this is the wire, this is the connector, and this is the wire harness, and we grab the wire back here and move it, it would do it, right? And then this clamp, imagine right here is on the harness. Well, I literally took my finger and pushed on the clamp down hard, put even pressure, and then it would act up. So I took that clamp off, and ever since I took that clamp off to try to move the wire harness around, I can't get it to come back, no matter what I do. So I did open up the harness, which I'll show you, and I want to inspect the wires, which they all look fine, nothing straight through. So right here, open this all up going back to the splice point which is back there it's hard to see in this view but pin 16 and 35 so I don't know I'm gonna be able to show this but 16 is right there white with a light blue 35 is the one behind it god let me get a pointer or something 
All right, let me point with this. So, this is like almost impossible to film and do this. I know. All right, so I grabbed the schematic here. So pin 16 and 35 on this. So we're gonna count, there's seven, we're gonna count over to 16, which will be, so that's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So there's a white with the light blue. You zoom in. That's white with the light blue, that's a can wire. Again, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You have to count the empty ones too. And then the other one's 35, so if that's 23, that's, that's 23, 24 is there. So what I'm going to do now is go from the inside. We'll come from the ins outside and move back over. So that's going to be... 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let me make sure that's right. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to be one behind it. Let me take a look. Let me open that up so you can see. So, again, 24, 25, 26. Sorry, let me start over. 24, 25, 26, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's this one back here. Let me zoom in. It's that one right there, which is white with a light green tracer. Right there, where I'm pointing my screwdriver. That's white with a light green tracer. That's pin 35. Sorry, it's hard to film and do this at the same time while leaning over the truck. So those are the can high, can low lines. So back to the schematics. 16 was light blue, white with the light blue. 16 white with the light blue. That's can low. 35 light with the light green is can high. So what I did is I took the harness apart or the shielding, not the shielding, the electrical tape conduit, which I'll rewrap up, all the way back to the splice point down there. Well, that band clamp was right where my thumb is pinched. All this, all these wires were really pinched tight together. Um, and the back of the band clamp goes on the back of this wire. So the back of that band clamp goes in the back of the wire. Well, you can see the twisted pair wires there. Those wires there, let me zoom in. It's a little far. There's different twisted pairs. They always twist can high, can low, and a twisted pair to cancel out noise. Well, the back of those wires and the back of that clamp sit right up against those uh can high can low wires i'll try to show you that on film here all right so what i'm gonna try to show you here is this bracket was well this is almost impossible to get my camera in there I'll try to do that again all righty i got my camera in here finally so if you look there's your can high, can low lines in a twisted pair. Well, this bracket was, the back of this bracket was just sitting on there, on there, zip tied, pinched tight. Well, I think what was probably happening is, looking into it more, those wires were sitting in this and the zip tie held it on there really tight. And it was putting a ton of pressure on there. And what's touching that metal bracket, which is going to the ground? Can high, can low. It's not chafed through the wires, but I believe it's a voltage bleed over thing. Because ever, ever since we took this bracket off, there's been a, it hasn't acted up. 
Well, this thing goes on there really tight, and those wires, you know, there's a whole harness of wires, say like 50, 60 wires, but the ones that are touching the bracket right away are the ones, are the can high, can low lines in the twisted pair. All right, <laughs> trying to film and do this at the same time, but on the right side there is the blue one, on the left side is the green one. There's other twisted wires in there too, but those are the ones that are coming from pins 16 and 35 that I got pulled up away. Well, they sit, like I said, right on the back of this. And all of these wires were real tight. And what's what are those can wires touching? Right when it's all on there. They're touching this bracket. They're in there and they're zip tied right in here real tight. You can see how small the zip tie goes. And then it's bolted to the engine computer, which is bolted to the frame. So now I'm moving around. I'd move the connector and it's like, oh, it's in the connector. I'd move the harness. Oh, it's in the harness. But it's always at where the wire harness meets the connector then I'd push on this hard and it would act up and then it wouldn't act up I think it's voltage bleed over issues is what's going on and that's why uh, it was shortened out now ever since we moved this bracket and opened this up and kind of relieved pressure I mean I we've done this probably for like the last hour scoping and moving wires starting it running and driving it nothing so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure everything else is good and spec it Rewrap it up with some regular electrical tape and some conduit and not wrap everything so tight like they did from the factory. I have seen this on another vehicle like my Jeep. Not a can system, but a wiper motor getting powered on from another power when it shouldn't. No insulation or uh, no open insulation. It was just voltage bleed over from wire integrity and stuff because everything was wrapped so, so tight. All right, so what I'm going to show you now is... um. Pretty much, just, it's a simple CAN bus I just set up. So imagine these two wires here, like this being CAN high, this being CAN low, 120 ohm resistor at one end, 120 ohm resistor at the other end. They run them in parallel, so you're gonna get 60 ohms across the bus. And then imagine these two yellow wires going one to CAN high, CAN low, going to the engine computer, you could have some other leads going to an ABS computer, and so forth. So in part one, I showed it where I had two channels, um, and obviously these will be twisted in a pair, but I would show two channels, and both of can high and can low were going to ground at the same time. And at first I'm like, well, why would they both go to ground? What's the chances of both of them grounding out? Well, it only needs to be one grounded out. So if you took, say, this one here, whether, you, whether it's can high or can low on this circuit, you just took this to ground, it's gonna ground the other one. Or if you took this one to ground, it's gonna ground this one. Why? Because they're connected through resistors, termination resistors in the ends of the circuit. So it's gonna take the whole bus down. That's why, and I'm gonna show that on my 2007 Tahoe to prove it on film that it'll take the whole bus down. Now the 07 Tahoe doesn't use CAN bus. Well, it kind of does. It uses GM LAN, which is General, Motor, General Motors Local Area Network, which is basically GM's predecessor to CAN. It's the same thing, 2.5 bias voltage going high for CAN high to 3.5, 2.5 going low for low to 1.5 differential voltage of 2 volts. But I wanted you to show this, so if I take one of these to ground, it's going to take the whole bus down. So only one of these wires need to be shorted to ground. And then this video in the next, they have two pictures that are gonna be up for like seven to 10 seconds each. And the first one shows how the clamp was on there. So there's actually three zip ties on this harness that was causing issues. Um, I'm not saying all three were, but they were extremely tight. Two of them were on the back shell to the harness that were, that were extremely tight. And then the other one was that metal clamp I was talking about. That was extremely tight. So, after we loosened that up, obviously went away. And then the second picture shows some marks from these uh, these three zip ties and the clamp that kind of uh, went into the um, wire, the can high, can low wire. I think it was the white with the light blue is the one it did, which it shows you in the I'll show you in the picture when it pops up on here. But that's all been fixed. It's all good. Um, everything's been redone. We didn't run new wires or nothing. We fixed those wires that were in there, rewrapped everything, everything's good to go, so now it can't short to ground. So now you can see those two pictures, and after that, I'll show you on the video how when you take one can wire down, 
it'll take both of the bus wires down. All right, so I'm on my Tahoe here to show you uh, can bus taking it down when I ground, you know, can high or can low, how it takes the whole bus down. So looking at those pictures in this video, uh, the first picture shows that, you know, that clamp on there was extremely tight with some zip ties. There was three zip ties. And then the second picture shows that the wire had three or four little marks on it. it was the white with the light blue which i believe was the can low wire that was uh um causing issues right so taking it short to ground whether it's shorted to ground through the bracket or shorted the ground from voltage bleed over but basically whatever happens with one wire will happen to the other one so if you short one the other one will be shorted if you take one of the you know 12 volts battery voltage the other one will go to 12 volts because what happens to one can wire happens to the other wire especially since they're in the twisted pair so i'm going to resemble that on my tahoe just to show that because at first the first video like i said i was like why or how are both can high and can low wires being shorted at the same time i mean it could happen but it's not pretty rare i would imagine but it doesn't need to happen that way it can just take one wire down and it takes the whole bus down because they're connected with termination resistors at the end. So what I want to show now is I got can high, can low. So if I freeze this, two and a half volts on can high bias, and then two and a half volts on can low bias. Going high to three and a half, going low to two and a half, or one and a half, I mean differential voltage is two volts so i got key on engine off breakout box plugged in what i'm going to use here is i'm in my can high right here these are just my scope leads piggyback for ground can high right there can low right there i'm in can high right here i'm gonna take the other one and go to the ground just pin four It'll be the same thing as jumping it in there or jumping it in the vehicle with a wire chafed right so if i take this and go down to this watch the scope and look they both went down and the instrument cluster is doing all kinds of weird stuff abs light all this stuff service oil drive because it can't communicate so if i freeze this and i look at let's go to the green one see where our bias voltage is at 132 millivolts that's zero volts i mean it's it's short the ground go to the other one 126.7 millivolts that's short to ground and on that truck i had 100 to 200 millivolts because that is a short to ground and then what's this little messages in here it's trying to communicate but it can't so what happens to one channel happens to the other hence that's why all this stuff is lining up perfectly so you only have to ground one. I only grounded the one wire or the one bus wire. Whether it's high or low, it's going to do that. So if I unhook this, watch it come back. Comes back. If I push it in, does it again. Pull it out, goes back. So that proves that only one wire can take the whole bus down. Because like I said, what happens to one automatically does the other. Because it's differential voltage. We're going to have to clear a bunch of codes on this Tahoe now. Because I'm making a bunch of U codes. Just like the truck had. But another thing you can do. We're going to turn off channel A. Put channel B on. Another cool little thing you can do is serial decoding. If you go in here. Channel B, turn it on. Can, oh, I can't remember what I'm on now. I think I'm on can high. Okay, so can high. Zero decoding. We're going to go can high. We're going to decode it. Enabled. Threshold. 
and change this to go above it. Let's just go to four volts just so we capture it. So the baud rate, that's fine. We do hexadecimal, that's fine. Actually, sorry, I gotta change my baud, my uh, rate back. I want too much. Let's leave it the way it was. There we go. So there's the hexadecimal. So this is the hexadecimal ID. All your, you know, your 11, all your bet, not 11 bits, but all your bits of data going across. Your data bytes here, sequence, sequence, acknowledge slot. Like you could go in here and pause this. You can measure from like, say here to here. Find it down here and say, oh, that's that line of code and decode it if you wanted to, right? Another way you can do it is you can do, and I got a point to all this, is go to binary. And then those are your, your zeros and ones. And it's 11-bit identifier. So ID, that's ID of whatever computer it's talking, right? So you can do all that. So there's obviously, it's zero decoding it. But if I ground this out, right? I would imagine that serial decoding would not read. Yeah, look, it goes away because it there's no messages. Hence, that's why you get the U codes. There's no messages going on. Cluster's going all crazy, just like it did on the truck. If I pull out, it comes back. Put it back in, serial decoding goes away because it cannot communicate. It's all U codes now. There's no messages. Now we'll go back. So it's all good again. So that just proves that. It's another way to check it. We just proved it on another vehicle. It takes one wire to go to ground. You could do the same thing. I could take it to power and it would take both wires to power or to battery voltage, you know, 12 volts would do the same thing. Is what does the one to do the other. So uh, just, I don't know if I mentioned yet, but this truck's been running for the last week, week and a half. No issues. It's been getting colder at night, hotter during the day. Everything's good to go. All the tension is released on those wires. Nothing short of the ground. No voltage bleed over the ground. So that is it for this 2012 Dodge Ram. Well, I know I said I was done, but I wanted to show you one more thing. Since I showed you sh uh, can short it to ground, I want to show you can short it to voltage because it does take them both to battery power if you short it to battery voltage, right? So. There's your can low, there's your can high. Two and a half bias voltage, two and a half bias voltage. I take this jumper lead. I just move this now. I'm just on trying to know the channel. Can low to pin 16, positive. If I short it to battery voltage, boom, it goes up there. You can stop this. And I'm gonna unplug that, but you can see the vehicle does not like that. There's your messages, but if you look, there's your scaling there. Um so if you look you can see it's battery voltage obviously like 11.4 there battery's a little weak and then this one right here the green one's 11.2 so it takes them both to battery voltage like i said what it does to one does to the other so now it's back to normal so now what i'm gonna have to do is plug these the scan tool in clear all these u codes but that is it now but it's 2012 Dodge Ram with the uh, CAN bus issue that was shorted to ground slash voltage bleed over.